This conference will now be recorded. All right, welcome everybody. Before we get things started this evening, um, Tracy is going to be our administrator facilitator this evening. So I would just ask Tracy if you could, um, like it's been done in the past, just read over our public meeting um, rules and etiquette. That would be great before we get things started. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. All meetings are electronically recorded. Participants' names will not be displayed during the meeting. All participants will be required to mute their microphones when not participating in the dialogue. If a participant wants to speak courtesy of the floor or wants to make public comment or has a question on a specific topic, they must type their name and address in the chat feature. The meeting facilitator will identify and call on the individual requesting to speak. If someone is participating via phone, there will be an opportunity to ask questions, comments, once the individual has unmuted their microphone and identified themselves with name and address. If someone has requested courtesy of the floor prior to the meeting via email, the facilitator will identify and call on the individual who has requested to speak during courtesy of the floor. Public comment will be limited to five minutes per speaker. And again, as a reminder, these rules have been established to ensure a professional meeting environment. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tracy. All Commissioner, right. Commissioner Morgan. Um, yes, Commissioner Walk. I'm, I'm happy to hear Tracy read the rules. Um, I'm happy that uh, at least the commissioners received a, a written copy of the rules. Um, going forward, it'd be a good idea to post those rules as they're being read, uh, just like is done at the uh, Planning Commission and Zoning Hearing Board meeting. <laughs> now, there's a couple things uh, regarding uh, the current meeting setup that I don't agree with. Um, the attendance list is closed. And I think these meetings should be run just like before the February 17 meeting, uh, and just like the Planning Commission and Zoning Hearing Board meetings are run. Uh, I would like the uh, attendee list to be open so everyone can see it. I make a motion so that the on? attendee list this is more. She's on. for the public to see. I, I think you made some, raised some good points. I know that we had a document circulated um, today about this, and I, I think it's very unfortunate that um, we changed our policy based on a, a singular incident last meeting when um, I think we've done a very good job of running our meetings for the last year. So um, certainly something I would like to have some discussion over. Well, it's, you can put some, you can play games. That's the thing. All right, let me go put the shoes on. We need, we need to, first of all, we need to get some, if you're, if you're not speaking. Make... Yeah, I think um, at this, at this point, uh, you know, we, we've, we have read in past meetings um, the meeting expectations, uh, just for the record. And uh, as far as displaying the names, um, displaying the names isn't any different than if we're at a public meeting. Everybody isn't having their name announced at a public meeting. So the intention here to keep the meeting the same or similar to the way we would be in person is if you choose to speak or have a comment, you would, in public, you would raise your hand or ask for courtesy of the floor. And on the virtual meetings, what you would do is put it in chat or unmute yourself and say your name and address and you would have the chance to speak. So what's being done and what has been done is to try and reflect the same type of decorum that would be held at a public meeting. So that is the intention. There has been no changes as far as the ability for anybody to speak or have courtesy of the floor or be able to approach the board. So that has not changed. 
Yeah. No, Commissioner I Morgan, um, there's two things here. Uh, let's take them one by one. So far, I've only spoken about the attendee list. I haven't said anything about the chat yet. The attendee list, I've made a motion that the attendee list should be open. If you wanna make an analogy, just like we can see who's in the real meeting room, so we can see who's in the virtual meeting room. Um, we've done this since these virtual meetings have started. There's no reason to change it. We had one bad incident uh, at the last BOC meeting. That doesn't create a reason to shut down the attendee list. So I've made a motion that the attendee list should be open. Well, we, we can't actually even make any motions at this point, Mike. We, you'll have to wait till we officially start the meeting. So I'd have to call the meeting to order and do um, um, a roll call. So why don't we get the meeting started and then you can okay. make your motion. That's probably the best way to get things started. So again, welcome everybody to the March 3rd meeting of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. Um, I'd ask that we first start things off by doing a roll call. Renee, could you please do a roll call for us this evening? Commissioner Walk? Here. Commissioner Mobilio? You're muted, Matt. Commissioner? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. Commissioner Sutton? Commissioner Sutton's phone is muted. <clears throat> We see him. Here. And Commissioner Morgan. Here. Thank you, Renee. At this point now, I'd ask if everybody could please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you everybody all right next i'd like to note that all public sessions of the south whitehall township board of commissioners are electronically recorded filed and posted on board docs for the public's access um so i'll just note before we get into um further discussion on commissioner walks comment that we the board did meet in executive session on february 25th February 28th, March 2nd, and this evening on March 3rd prior to this meeting to discuss personnel and legal matters. So before we go into our, our meeting minutes, I wanted to um, come back up and, uh, and give the opportunity um, to finish the conversation. Mike, um, however, you know, we, do, we do have a guest with us this evening, um, um, County Executive Phillips Armstrong. Would you like to save that discussion for later in the meeting so we don't hold everybody up or are you insistent to do it now? It's up to you. Yep, yeah, this will take one minute. I made a motion to open the attendee list. Is there a second? I would second that motion. I, I, I agree with the points that you've made. I think it would be a good idea just as when we're in a public meeting that we can see um, those that are, are joining us from the community. So let's vote. So we have a motion on the floor and for uh, uh, displaying the attendee list from Commissioner Walk and a second from Commissioner Kelly. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Mobilio? I have no objection to the motion, but I will only uh, say this for, for everyone's edification. And that is that it's very clear to me from this meeting and many previous meetings that Commissioner Walk's only intention is to uh, try to disrupt meetings, try to- Point of uh, order, Commissioner yeah, Mark. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Commissioner Kelly. Excuse me, Commissioner Kelly, you can have your time. We please refrain what? from personal you attacks can... of someone's intention, Commissioner Morgan, point of order. 
Commissioner, Commissioner Kelly, you can wait your turn or you can interrupt and be an obstruction to the normal process. I if believe you're out of order. Oh, all right, Commissioner, if you Commissioner insist on Kelly. Being an obstruction to the normal process. Let's just get just the be, vote. Let's, let's just, just get the vote, Matt. Let's let's move it along and get the vote and, and move my forward. My vote is no because Commissioner Walk has obviously made his intention made to disrupt the process with no actual substantive reason for it commissioner morgan point of order in accordance with robert's rules of order please instruct the commissioners to make statements about the issues and not make statements about commissioners which are personal attacks your inaction and silence essentially enable these personal attacks to continue <laughs> so please take okay action all right all right all right well, Mr. I, I understand to address Robert. the issues Mike. and not personal tax Get over right. yourself, we, Mike. Give me a have, break. We have, we have a motion on the floor. We're starting through the vote. Renee, could you please move through with the votes? Thank Get you. over yourself, Mike. Seriously. All right. All right. Commissioner Enough. Satton. Enough. Commissioner Satton. Uh, I vote no and impartial because there was too many discrepancies in the past of uh, uh, false names. Uh, name name all kinds of name calling uh, so uh, I'll vote uh, no I do think that having it similar to what um, physical meetings are is the way to do it Commissioner Kelly aye Commissioner Morgan so um my comments on this are, are this before I vote the intention of a virtual meeting is to keep it as close to a, an in-person meeting as humanly possible. What we experienced at the last meeting um, is it can't happen. I mean, if people are going to represent themselves, they should represent themselves with their proper names. That's what would happen at a public meeting. And at a public meeting, we don't know everybody who is in the audience. We only know the people who stand up and announce themselves. None of that has changed. So what we're doing by not allowing people to put up fake names and, and rude and obnoxious names is keeping the decorum of the meeting. And I think that is the intention here. There is no intention whatsoever to not have people be able to say who they are. And that is open at any given point during this meeting. So with that being said, in order to keep things the same same as we would do in a public meeting, and knowing that what has happened in the past has given people the opportunity to not display their proper name or properly announce themselves, I vote no for posting those names because I think it is not appropriate for people to put that type of slander up on the screen. You wouldn't want it for yourself. I wouldn't want it for anybody. It's, in my opinion, no different than when someone speaks out of order on and there and you ask that their their mic be muted and and I know Commissioner Kelly you have done that in the past because people have spoken and they haven't said who they were and they were out of order so you ask that they mute their mics it's it's no different you have to just say your name and your address and approach the board appropriately so with that I say no so motion does not carry All right, moving forward, we have our meeting minutes this evening for consideration and possible vote. They are our February 17th, 2021 BOC meetings. The board does have them for consideration this evening. Are there any questions or comments from the board on the board meeting minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve said meeting minutes from the board? I move. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a second. Okay. Second from Commissioner Morgan. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. 
Commissioner Sutton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next this evening, we have a very special guest with us. Um, uh, we have our very own Lehigh County Executive, Mr. Phillips Armstrong. Uh, Phillips Armstrong, the floor is yours. We're thrilled to have you here this evening. Welcome. Well, thank you very, very much. I, you know, as I said uh, four years ago, I get out to every one of the meetings at least once a year, and it's a little different not sitting in the the chair watching. Uh, but uh, I wanted to let you know what's going on in the county. As you know, we just got done handing out our $33.5 million in CARES funding. And I'm really proud to say it was great working with uh, Commissioner Morgan and Renee in the cooperation that we got from South Whitehall Township. And I think it really did help the process smooth. And I'm glad to say that we were able to, to pass on, a, and I'm sure you guys needed the money as, as much as everybody else did. So I'm, you know, in these new national organizations now, which does give us a heads up in Lehigh Valley for what's coming in the future. And uh, we're in line for, for some more substantial, I don't know if they'll be whittled down or not, but uh, I think we're going to be getting more. Recently, we've just got two grants, which takes us over to $22 million for housing and rent assistance. And we're working with uh, CALCV, uh, Catholic Charities, and it's quite a substantial bit of money to make sure that we're going to be handing this out the best possible. So that's what we've been kind of doing right now, trying to manage through COVID. I also want to thank South Whitehall Township. As you know, we're going ahead with our construction plans of Cedar Brook, and that is in South Whitehall Township. So we were in front of your planning and zoning last week, and everything went smoothly. And again, I want to thank you for your cooperation. I think the most important thing about local government is that we've been cooperating together. I really am proud to say that politics have not played any role in any of these things that we've been doing back and forth. And it really does work, I think, for the citizens of the county and South Whitehall. So really, I guess if you have any questions of me, I'd be glad to answer them if I can. That's really why I like to come out and then mute myself and listen for the rest of the night. But does anybody, uh, do any of the commissioners have a question for the county? Mr. Armstrong, I would just recommend you not listen for the rest of the meeting because I'm. it's gonna probably rock you, your, you to the core. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been on a lot of meetings, so, and I was president of the Whitehall Township Board, and uh, that's all right, I'm used to it. But that's what that's what local government is, listening, making some good points, and then coming out on the other side with a good solution. Well, w w putting all that aside, I just want to uh, give you my sincere appreciation because I know you've, you've made an incredible effort, um, especially online, to just put information out to the public, be transparent, and regardless of the nasty, horrible things that uh, you know people say, you put yourself out there. You've made yourself available in the ways that are that are reaching reaching Lehigh County folks every day, and I am impressed. And and not that it matters, not that my opinion matters, but I think you're doing a fantastic job and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Phil, we 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 absolutely appreciate the relationship we have with the county and you in particular, and um, knowing that. COVID has been difficult on, on, you know, everybody from a commute, from a local community level to a county level, to a state level, to a federal level. It is wonderful that we can all work together um, to, to try and get through this and, and, and 
and be better because of it, um, be stronger because of it. And, and I really do think we've, we've done that. So we thank you for taking the time for, to come out tonight and share with us what's going on in the county level and keeping us up to speed and um, look forward to more great things um, or a brighter future for 2021, that's for sure. Um, thank you, we are hoping for it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for sure. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you. I've been following you with your um, social media videos. I do appreciate the updates that you give to the community. So thank you for doing that. And if you have a spot or a business or anything you would like to highlight, please just you know let me know and we'll be there. We're gonna go to the Allentown Farmers Market this Friday. Uh, so we're gonna try to present that, but we've done pretty good with those hits. We're getting, anywhere from 1,700 to 2,400 hits that we're promoting local things for our people to be involved with. So if you know of something, let me know. We'll be glad to come out. Well, oh, Mr. oh, Phil, I got something for you. We got the Greenway. I think that needs a huge spotlight. So happy to share that with you and maybe we can get that up on your spotlight sometime soon. I will definitely contact you and we'll set that up for some time Fan soon. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. All right. We will do that. Fantastic. Great things happening here in South Whitehall. We need to get the spotlight on some of those. Oh, absolutely. I uh, I love your tree lighting ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> we, we missed it. We missed it this year, but we had, we had a really great uh, drive through event. So that, that was yes. perfect. Yep. And the food bank you were at, I was there. That was a nice event too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The township does Phil, great things for sure. Phil, Phil Tory is the the perfect, uh, you know, uh, person to be representing South Wales Township. I, I only tell you, she is in every event. She her life is South Wales Township, and I can't I can't thank her enough for what she does. And as I said, she works very well with us too. Very Thank well. You. Very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so, I will, I will, I will second Commissioner Mobilio for everything that you said about. Thank you. Story Morgan, and a little bit more. Well, I'll tell you what. It's it's not about it's not about anything that I've done. It's truly a team effort from all of us as commissioners. Um, you know, I, I think you know we we work we work together to try and do great things for this community. And you know, over the past year, I think as a team, um, we've done some some amazing things. And that's with the help of the county um, and any other support agency we have out there, between you know the Jordan Greenway and the upgrade of our building and um, our parks. We've had some major upgrades on our parks and the ability to do a COVID grant program for our local businesses. Um, so it's it's a team effort, honestly. It's it's not one person, not one commissioner. It's truly a team effort, and it's it's a pleasure and, and honor to be a part of it. And, and thanks, Phil, for coming out and supporting us, and, and uh, we look forward to more great things. Glad to work with you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Phil, I just want to thank you for everything you do for the township, uh, in particular for Cedar Brook. Um, the Cedar Brook, you know, team uh, was at the zoning hearing board uh, last week, and they they did an excellent job, uh, as as you would expect. And uh, I believe soon, I, I don't know exactly when, but soon they'll be before the uh, board of commissioners here to to gain our approval for the uh, Cedar Brook expansion. So we're looking forward to that presentation as well. Thank you. We'll be on our toes that night. <laughs> Great. So, um, well, Phil, if it's okay with you, I, I can open the floor too. Um, if anybody in the in the public um, uh, I'll, has any questions or comments, um, so we can we can open that up if you have a minute or two. Sure, absolutely. All right. All right. Tori, um, Brian Height would like to uh, ask. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, a question? Absolutely, Brian, floor is yours. Uh, Brian Height, 1273 Eck Road. Uh, Executive uh, Armstrong, I wonder if you had any information or any update to the county-owned bridge, uh, the Manassas Guth covered bridge that has been closed since July of 2019. Thank you. Yes, we just 
are in the process of an award of the bridge contract. Uh, we only got one bid on that, but it met all of our spe specifications and we just cleared it through law, the contract. So yes, we should be getting going on that really soon now. Excellent news, thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. I'm glad, I'm glad I can have good news every now and then. Great. Any other questions or comments for Executive Armstrong? Tori, there are no other uh, questions in the chat box. All right. We'll give an opportunity if anybody wants to unmute their mic and doesn't have access to the to the chat box if you're on your phone, um, just to make sure there's no other questions. All right. Looks like you're good to go. All right. Well, thank you again. We so appreciate you being here this evening. That was fantastic. Okay. We'll, we'll get you some great highlights to All start right. with. And I will be at your Greenway, I promise. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Moving along, we have no ordinances this evening for consideration, no resolutions. Um, however, we do have one motion this evening, um, and an important one at that, for consideration on and on and for possible adoption. It is a motion to approve the tentative agreement between the Teamsters Local 773 and South White Health Township for years 2021 to 2024, and to authorize the Township Manager and Board President to execute the tentative agreement and take all necessary steps to implement it, including executing a consolidated collective bargaining agreement that incorporates the terms of the tentative agreement. Renee, would you like to present on this one this evening? Sure, I can do that. So we're Great. pleased to present a tentative agreement tonight that was reached with the Public Works. Um, the Public Works Union did ratify um, this tentative agreement on Monday, March 1st. And I'll just give a high level overview of um, the terms of agreement. This is a four year agreement beginning in 2021 and ending December 31st of 2024. Um, the wage increases over the four year period will be 2%, 2%, 2.5%, .5 and 2.5% respectively. Um, there was an increase in the standby pay from $30 to $35 per day. Um, our subcontracting language remained the same. We did um, modify some of the hours of work um, language relating to split shifts, um, requests of the workers to volunteer to work in excess of 12 hours during storm occurrences. Um, we are adding a um, yard and garden center um, staff member from the public works team with a schedule of Tuesday to Saturday. Our healthcare um, plan design will remain the same for the length of the contract, as well as the premium contributions remaining at 7.5% over the term of the contract. Um, there have been caps established for um, each year in after 21, so 22, 23, and 24. There are weekly caps so that if the premium um, cost would exceed that cap, their contribution would remain um, at a fixed rate. The dental and vision plans are remaining the same during the length of the contract. Our defined benefit plan um, um, employee contribution remains the same in 21, 22, and 23, standing at 1%, with an increase in 2024 to 1.5%. Um, Upon the ratification of this, employees who this agreement, um, employees who were hired between 1 1 of 27 and 12 31 of 20 receive a one time $1,500 contribution into the retirement plan pursuant to the IRS regulations. The township, um, the um, sick leave plan was revised for the employees. Um, the employees went from 13 weeks of paid sick leave to 80 hours. Um, in 2021 and 56 hours annually in 22 and thereafter. However, there is a short-term disability benefit paid for 100% by the employer, by the township, which covers 100% of the base pay 
of the employees with a five-day elimination period for a 13-week period once approved by the insurance carrier based on eligibility. Um, increases for annual sick leave. Um, incentive bonuses um, were increased from three and $600 to $600 and $1,200 based on either two days or one day respectively of time used. Um, under miscellaneous provisions, um, employees receive reimbursement for safety shoes, and that was increased to $200 for the length of the contract. Um, and there were some other minor language changes um, throughout the contract, but again, those are the substantial changes to the contract. Thank you, Renee. So um, I'm going to open it up uh, now for the board for any uh, questions or comments on this motion before we open it up to the public. Commissioner Morgan, I, I, I fully expect that my colleagues, Commissioners Kelly and Walk, will have extended comments about a variety of things. So I will re reserve my time at the conclusion of their statements. Well, uh, that if it, Commissioner Kelly and Walk, do you guys have a statement? I, I'm not aware that you do, but if you do, floor is yours. I didn't realize we took turns when we are allowed to speak. Um, I certainly do have a comment. I uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I feel that the just uh, I'm thankful that the union is back to work. I know that it's a difficult process for both the negotiating team and the union. I'm thankful for our workers um, who take care of our township. I uh, I was disappointed in the process just that the commissioners um, did not provide direction up front to our negotiating team just as the legislators of this board didn't provide the vision for it or what, what the expected outcome would be um, and i do think that's something that we as a board moving forward should discuss before uh, a contract or a budget or anything else of that matter um, is dealt with we are the ones that are supposed to be setting the direction and then the staff follows. Um, one of the, this one part of the contract that I didn't realize was gonna be such a, a sticking point or, or such a large impact on the workers was um, the requirement for working on Saturdays at straight time. That's a decision that, um, again, I wish that we would have talked about even maybe as early as last summer during the budget process to have an understanding of why um, that was such a critical point for us and it's a it's a big change for their families now to be working potentially on weekends and that's something that i think we as a board should have discussed in advance i have i have oh. a comment sure. yeah so uh i also have a comment about the process <clears throat> and i i want to say uh, be very clear, these comments are not about the negotiating team. The negotiating team uh, did a fine job, especially considering the very uh, difficult and challenging circumstances. Um, so this is about the process and it's nothing personal. I'm making these comments uh, so that, you know, in the future, right, we could have uh, something uh, improved. Um, I do think on, on a couple points, uh, the process was sub suboptimal. Uh, I do think perhaps the negotiation could have gone quicker and the strike may have been prevented uh, if we had done a couple other things. The, the BOC has the accountability for the union contract and we're the ultimate authority for compensation and benefits of the staff. But in this case, the BOC was not allowed to provide proactive guidance uh, on the township goals and negotiation parameters prior to the negotiations. Uh, and also in this case, we're not allowed to attend the union negotiating meetings, although uh, Commissioner Kelly and I strongly requested uh, you know, that both of these items would be included in the process. Um, I, I think this would have been beneficial uh, and uh, 
for the commissioners to hear the communication at the meeting um, as opposed to getting the information you know after the fact uh, and in the future the process would be optimized if we were to include these changes thanks for listening to my opinion thank you commissioner walk commissioner Sutton or commissioner mobilio did you have any comments or thoughts i have just a, a little comment uh, i have to say that i i am very proud of the legal team the management and staff that negotiated this agreement uh they were very dedicated i understand that often they negotiated to the late late hours of the night often early mornings uh they did very very good job in my view uh, i don't see it uh, i don't see that it is necessary for me as a commissioner to know all the little details on it the end result is what matters and it looks like it's been very good and i thank you very much commissioner mobilio thank you commissioner sutton thank you commissioner morgan um my my comment is this from the start it was made clear to the board that we had very sophisticated and experienced negotiators handling this this matter and that includes two attorneys from Eckerd Siemens who their their literal entire profession is dedicated to negotiating labor contracts we had experienced administrative staff including our township manager who has been our township manager for 10 years who was incredibly experienced in negotiating these types of contracts i had no doubt from the start and i made it very clear to our attorneys and our staff that i trusted them implicitly to negotiate a solid and fair agreement that not only carefully took care of our public work staff but also protected the long-term fiscal responsibility of the township. And so for that reason, I deferred that this, those decision, that decision making to them. Arguably, of the five commissioners, I am the most qualified of any of them to negotiate any type of contract. My entire career has been dedicated to negotiating contracts, negotiating labor agreements, uh, negotiating settlements. The remainder of the, the commissioners on this board cannot hold a candle to my experience in negotiating agreements. And yet, what I've heard throughout this process are commissioners who have decided that they're relatively minor experience doing anything of a business capacity somehow qualifies them to negotiate a multi-million dollar labor agreement where our attorneys who do this for a living and our staff who do, does it for a living would somehow fall short so i will i will conclude by saying this if the desire of the public is to have a board of five who have literally no experience or no justification to negotiate a multi-million dollar labor agreement be involved in the day the the minutia of an agreement with a union an agreement that is governed by federal law that there are certain things you simply cannot do or say if it's the desire of the public to have five unsophisticated and that includes myself because even with my experience i can see that i am not qualified to negotiate this sort of an agreement if it is the desire of the public to have the five of us without the sophistication to negotiate this type of agreement 
and that they should expect us to have anything to offer to a law firm and lawyers who do this for a living and the administrative staff, including our incredible township manager, Renee Bickle. If you expect us to have anything to offer, then you are, I'm, I'm sorry to say, sorely mistaken because none of the five of us have any business being involved in the day-to-day -day negotiations of such a contract. And if that is what your expectation is, then these five commissioners on this board are simply not the people that should be on this board because you should have a completely different board trying to negotiate something as sophisticated as this type of agreement. And that's all I have to say. So th thank you everybody for your, your thoughts and your comments on the board and, and I'll, I'll round things up with, with my thoughts and comments on, on this. Um, uh, being the longest standing commissioner on, on their group right now, I've um, you know seen a variety of um, contracts negotiated and all negotiated successfully. Um, the process has not changed. And um, the township has, is, in, is in a great space. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of both sides, both, both the negotiating team um, uh, and, and, the, um, and the union uh, for negotiating a successful contract that benefits um, not just the public works department, but also the township as a whole. So I, I'm I'm proud that we got to this point, and um, you know we've got things completed, and we have a, a, a tentative agreement to talk about, and hopefully vote on this evening. Um, again, I, I emphasize from the process standpoint and from the vision standpoint. Um, I, I, I beg to differ a little bit with, with some of the comments. I, I believe um, as a group, um, the commissioners were very, very well informed. We had um, many um, meetings on, on the subject matter. We were kept very well up to date on, on the different topics. And um, for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, so I am happy to say I'm glad we're, we're through this and hopefully um, we can vote successfully on this evening for a good contract for not only the township, but also the union and continue to do great things for this township. So that's my comment. So I think at this point, we should probably open things up to Morgan, any questions. Just yes, a point, um, I believe uh, our township manager, Renee Bickle has not been township manager for 10 years. Okay, I didn't, I didn't say she was, but I, I'm, what's your point? 17 I just wanted to be sure I didn't think she had been the manager that long okay you you can probably you'll probably object to the minutes of next week and you can correct it then just trying okay, to say, let's right? all right so are there any other questions or comments um, from the board otherwise I'd like to move to the public for their questions and comments at this point if that's all right so I'll open it up um, Tracy do you want to go through the list please Yes, we do have several. Um, the first okay. person would be Jacob Roth. Jacob? Hi, Jacob. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? We can. We just need your address, please. Sure. So my address is uh, 1499 White Oak Road. Um, I was going to start with a simple question and then, then go into a statement, but um, I guess Commissioner Kelly kind of answered my question uh, when she's, you know, I guess advocated for the fact that the board should set guidelines uh, for these negotiations. I'm not going to argue that that the board should negotiate these contracts. I don't I don't think that's appropriate. Um, but as with as is with any organization, whether it be a municipality, a county government, a school board, or a business, um, the governing board, which is the five of you, should set the guidelines. Um, shortly after the the strike began, uh, Commissioner Mobilio made a, a comment on his commissioner Facebook page that reads, in part, the commissioner's quote do not tell the attorneys or negotiators what the direction, tone, or parameters should be. So given that statement and, and given the norm of, of the uh, commissioners not necessarily engaging in negotiations but setting parameters, I decided to conduct uh, an independent investigation uh, to further determine what the board's role is in these negotiations. According to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's Township Commissioner Handbook, published by the DCED, on page 20, under a section about the Sunshine Law, it reads that commissioners, quote, executive sessions, 
may be held for only a limited number of purposes. These purposes include negotiations for collective bargaining agreements. It later goes on to say, quote, any use of the executive session should be limited to the situations clearly falling within the list of enumerated purposes, close quote. The aforesaid collective bargaining agreements clearly falls into the list of enumerated purposes. So what does this prove? It proves that the board is so closely tied to the negotiations process that it may require the board to utilize executive session, which is only permitted for that specific list of enumerated purposes. So now that I've laid out some of the facts regarding this process, let's apply it to a real life situation. According to statements given to the, uh, to the public by township employees, the township notified public works employees that South Whitehall would not contribute to health insurance costs after Sunday, the 28th of February, while the strike was still ongoing. My main question from this is, who authorized that order? Based on the facts I laid out previously, two possibilities come to mind. One, under the leadership of President Morgan, the rest of the Board of Commissioners gave this order and guidance to the negotiating team, who in turn notified the public works employees. Or such scenario two, the negotiating team gave this order without the guidance and without the parameters set by the board. If this is the case, I'm surprised that the board leadership has not pushed back on the negotiating team. That must mean that the board condones the threat to take away health insurance, regardless of how the order was given. I neither is true, Jacob. Neither is true. Matt, but, Matt Mobilio, Commissioner Mobilio, I'm speaking right now. Thank well, you. You said there was so, two options. Okay. And, well, and uh, Commissioner, wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. Commissioner Mobilio, let, let him finish. You have three more minutes. Two more minutes, sure. actually, Jacob. Sure and then multiple answer your question. Thank you. Well, we'll thank, you Commissioner Morgan. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Morgan. Um, I will repeat, if this is the case, I'm surprised the board leadership did not push back on the negotiating team because that must mean the board condones the health insurance threat. So regardless of how that order was given, and I, I don't know the answer, I don't know if I ever will, I cannot emphasize enough that the board, although not directly involved in negotiations, is ult ultimately accountable for the township negotiators because they appoint the township uh, manager and the negotiating team, period. The board is ultimately accountable. So I say to the public, um, as I've already seen throughout my comment, uh, my, my comments are, are certain to draw ire from certain boards of members of the Board of Commissioners, um, but no, how, no matter how the, the board will attempt to, to spin my statements and their reactions to it, I want the public to know that the entire fiasco of negotiations and the lack of transparency about the process of negotiations is purely the result of poor and ineffective leadership by the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. Thank you, and I will reserve the balance of my time in case I need to respond to any commissioners that may respond to me. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Jacob. Um, I'll, just, um, I'll just respond quickly by letting you know, um, as far as I, I stand behind, we were very clear on vision. We were very much a part of the process where we needed to be as far as it's been established um, for as long as I know. And as far as your comment about me specifically, having the authority to authorize anything alone, stand alone, is absolutely inaccurate. We, we, we act as a group, we always do. I do not have the position to act independently of any of the other commissioners. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over. Um, you know, I'll also defer to, you, you had some legal questions there in regards to, um, um, negotiations and how that was done in process. I'm not sure if, if Amy or Joe is on the call. Uh, I'll, I'll, take to back, I'll take back the time reserved. Um, they were not legal questions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They were hey, Jacob, Jacob, you, you Jacob. asked that you not be interrupted. Can you not interrupt? I also response? reserved my time to respond. Well, your, your time is not happening. Okay, Commissioner Mobilio, stop. everybody stop or I'm going to stop. Jacob, you've got one more minute. What 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 is your question, sir? I do not have a question. It's a statement. Uh, it was not a legal question. I did not quote any law. I simply quoted uh, precedent and procedure that, that was set forth by a handbook. Um, I'm not asking any questions. I just wanted to make it very clear that the board is ultimately accountable. I, I, I apologize if I if it seemed as though I said you, Commissioner Morgan, have ultimate authority. You don't. It's, it's the board and, and you're the president of the board. So it is a board decision. Um, 
So I don't have any questions. I was not asking any legal questions. I want to point out that the ultimate authority and the ultimate accountability for the actions of the negotiators falls on the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Let, let me just chime in there. Okay, Tori, before you, before you respond let's, and move let, on. Let's not get uh, argumentative. Let's just make I'm it not, clear. I'm not and argumentative. Move along. I want I want to I want to clarify something, and I am not interested in getting argumentative. Um, and I'll ask this question to to Joe Zader, uh, so he could take himself. Well, you're off mute now. I just want to make sure I didn't catch you off guard. Um, but my understanding, and and correct me if I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, I will happily admit it, is that this whole issue of health insurance, and this whole issue of because I've seen this now online multiple times. You know, the the board has directed that in health insurance be stopped for public works folks. Is it or is it not a direct result of the previous collective bargaining agreement that the health insurance issue is addressed? In other words, is it or is it not a result of a previous bargaining agreement or and or a statutory direction that the health insurance uh for the public works folks comes to an end because of what their actions were as far as striking or because of the agreement coming to an end there was no direction uh. from there was no direction from the board or any of the negotiators for the board that said, hey, put an end to their their health insurance. Yeah, Amy, I, I have a comment. Whoa, whoa, Mike, um, Mike, 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 I asked a question. Can we, can we, can I get my answer, my question answered before you chime in? Oh um, yeah, can I, okay. also I didn't realize you asked a question. I thought you made a oh, statement, I'm sorry. I'm asking. Okay. Okay. All right, Attorney All right. Snyder is on the line as well. Great, thank you, thank you, Renee. So let's, let's let, the, the question be answered. So either um, Attorney Zader or Attorney um, Snyder, um, we'll, we'll let you guys decide who wants to handle that question. And then we can move to Commissioner Walk's question. I Thank will you. defer to Attorney Snyder. She's the expert in this realm. Hi, Welcome, this Amy. Is Amy Snyder. How are you? <laughs> um, the answer to the question is that there's a statutory section with um, that prohibits striking employees from being entitled to compensation. Compensation includes health benefits. So, so Amy, at the end of the day, no matter, you, you could point the finger at any one of us on this board or any administrative staff, but at the end of the day, if the, the public works folks decide to strike, the law says, you're not entitled to benefits if you're striking. That's correct. Okay, hey, Commissioner Walk. Um, I'm not sure this is directly related to the, the last bit of conversation. Um, I'd just like to come back and highlight, uh, the point I made earlier was that the commissioners were not allowed to provide proactive guidance you know, with regard to overall township goals as it relates to this contract, uh, and weren't allowed to provide input on negotiating parameters. Um, in accordance with um, Mr. Roth's comments, I mean, we, we have the ultimate authority, we have the accountability um, for, for this contract. Yes, indeed, uh, the township manager and the attorneys, the labor attorneys are responsible for negotiating it, and we let them negotiate it. But the point is, at the very beginning, we we asked for the opportunity to give input, and we were we were rejected. We asked to give input on things like uh, public work wage increases, staffing levels, the scope of their responsibilities, their work schedule, um, and and employee satisfaction. I mean, there was never any meeting where the board commissioners was able to give general purpose guidance and direction to the negotiating team as we should be able to do as the elected officials who have the authority and the accountability to do so right that's a clarification of what i said earlier right and i'll, I'll clarify i'll clarify another point which uh 
what was spoken about after I, I made the initial point. We requested to be at the negotiating meeting. I personally, I didn't, I didn't request to be there to negotiate. I wanted to be there to just listen, to understand what was going on as, as a commissioner who has the accountability to, to make a decision to approve this or not approve it at the end of the day. Now, now we've been told these were difficult negotiations, right? And we're fra fraught with a, a lot of communication issues, all right? And we, we were getting a lot of uncertain information on a periodic basis, rather than sitting there firsthand and hearing the negotiation firsthand, you know, without having one or two commissioners the ability to do that. Our request to do this was rejected, despite the fact that in fact commissioners have been sitting with the negotiating team in the past i'm not sure where where everybody was but i was uh called for uh executive sessions in the last week while negotiations were going on uh half a dozen times, maybe more. And each one of those meetings, we were told and asked of our opinion as to where and how the negotiation is going on. So I'm not sure, Mr. Walk, that, that we were not uh, uh, notified of what's going on. I think we were, and well, we were part of it all the time. Commissioner Seton, to be fair, to be fair, Commissioner Seton, multiple of those phone calls, Commissioner, uh, to, to multiple, multiple of those phone calls, Commissioner Kelly said she had an important other phone call and she had to duck out of those calls. So uh, those, those calls that we actually had, at least two of them, Commissioner Kelly said, oh no, I, I have to leave. I have an important other call, which I don't know what else that could, what could be more important than negotiating uh the the public works uh contract but she backed out of both of those so i don't know that she has any any room to st to argue that she was not involved oh commissioner okay Mark, so please. let's yeah. let's um let's yeah. let's move Mark, along here let's, i would like let's to move along. commissioner I Mark, i had a personal matter and commissioner mobility you missed meeting oh, oh, point of order oh, commissioner yeah. kelly point of order point of okay. order okay enough 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 i would like to respond to uh, uh, we, we are not going to attack now we're, we're done with order. the tit for attack i'm talking about the negotiations point i would like order. to point of order commissioner enough. morgan enough. 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 Let's, what's the point of order commissioner commissioner have, kelly you have commissioner a comment kelly, on many occasions has accused me of making personal attacks and asked for a point of order so i'm asking for a point of order against her I don't, Okay. Resolve let's, the point of order. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, Resolve. Let's, let's please. I have a comment. I mean, if you have a question or comment, um, not not an argumentative, and Matt, no more argumentative either. Please, please go on so we can move on with this. Thank this you. comment is regarding the negotiation process. Just a quick comment. Um, I was, uh, Commissioner Wilk said what I was going to say. Um, in the past, commissioners have been at the table. Um, and I will agree, um, certainly would have liked to have been at the table to observe the process, to understand, um, and to have firsthand knowledge. Certainly we have had meetings the last couple of weeks as Commissioner Sutton um, spelled out, but I do know there was a great period from early November to the end of January where we didn't have any meetings. We had no updates. We went all of November, all of December, and most of January without any input, um, no report back to where negotiations were, and no opportunity to provide any direction. Uh, and that is that is how our meetings went. Um, and to the health insurance um, being canceled, I do understand that is a statute, and I do believe the township had the opportunity whether we wanted to enforce that statute or not. Um, 
it's certainly an option that we, we could have exercised as opposed to choosing to not allow their health insurance to continue as negotiations had come to a deadlock. Thank you. Okay, Tracy, can we move on with any other questions that are um, in the public, please? Yes, uh, the next person would be Brian Hay. Hi, Brian, welcome. Can we just get your address, please? Sorry, I I, uh, I report for WFMC. I just had a question about the number of employees represented by the union, uh, public works employees. Sure, there are currently, there are I live in Bethlehem Township. <laughs> there, there are currently 29 employees covered under the... Thank you. Mm -hmm. You got it. All right, Tracy, what's next? Uh, Robert Hodges is next. Mr. Hodges. We just need your address, please, for the record. Mr. Hodges? You were with us? I, it, oh, am I there you are. Yeah, oh, can okay. You. There you go. Sorry, I had my headphones plugged in, but somehow I turned off my mic. All right. Um, so I have two questions. One was my understanding that sub subcontractors had to be used during the strike, and I'm wondering how much that cost the township. Um, and secondly, um, the contract ended, uh, I believe, on December 31st at the end of the year. Uh, they didn't go on strike until early February, and then now three months later, uh, no, sorry, two months, uh, we finally have an agreement. I'm wondering what did the township, uh, by not coming to an agreement sooner, what did, did the township accomplish? What what uh, did the union give that you know the township was fighting for um, that was worth holding out for that long? Thank you very much. I'll refer to um, I'll defer to um, Amy and and Renee for um, any comments we can reply back on that one with. But I, I guess I would say I, I don't believe for a minute that the township held out on anything. I, it's a strong statement, but um, yeah, the township did not hold out on any on any issues. So I, I don't understand. That's what we'll. Yeah, the township did not hold out on any issues. Um, and uh, I'm sorry. If you, you want to say something else. <laughs> Oh, I, if I'm back on, uh, I, I'm, I guess that statement just logically that doesn't make sense to me. If the township didn't hold out on anything, the agreement would have we would have had the agreement before the contract ran out. So uh, logically, that statement doesn't make sense. So um, I guess that my my question stands. Well, the parties continued to discuss and meet, and, and we met on February 4th um, prior to the strike, and we had meetings scheduled the following week. So, again, the parties had continued meeting and discussing, so. Okay, follow up again. Is there anything that you felt that the township needed to get in this contract um, that you did achieve that, uh, again, did not come to an agreement sooner? I think from a from a broad level, I'm I'm just going to talk from a broad level. I'm, I'm I was not on the negotiating team, but just knowing how negotiations, um, you know, the process works, you know, it's 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 not a question of hold out or it's it's a balance. It's 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 what's what's in the best interest of the of the of the township employees, the union in this matter, and also the township as a whole. Um, you know, so there's a balance. There's a going back and forth. So it's not what did the township not do or it's not what did the union not do it's getting to that that middle ground and that balance so i'm, I'm not really sure mr hodges if, if there's a straight answer for you i don't know if there's one exact item because i'm i'm quite certain and i, I couldn't rattle them off but there was a variety of different topics that had to be um talked about and negotiated and gone back and forth periodically through that entire time frame until a balance was achieved and and the balance is where we're at this evening 
Um, and that's, that's the end goal that both parties agreed on. And um, we can hopefully vote on this evening to move things forward. So I, I know that doesn't answer your question directly, but I, I just, you know, I, I think I think your question is, is a little difficult to give one straight answer because it, it it was it was very fluid. It was constantly changing, and both sides were constantly changing based on the needs and requests, de depending that we're coming in, I guess, at, at whatever time. So, well, thank you, Commissioner Morgan, just to chime in there. I mean. Uh, yeah, we're we, going to we have, have to very, mute some mics. Very mature, <laughs> very mature okay. folks chiming in. Probably the same folks will be anonymous when we open up the chat. But I, I just hope you know that that was not me. I, I Rob, I we I think we all know it was not you. Um, but at the end of the day, um, look, it's if we as a as a board, even if the board was completely in charge, like let's assume for sake of argument. The five of us were the negotiating team, and the and the union came to us and said, "Look, we're going to strike unless you give us all $150,000 a year base, and no one's going to get you know no premiums. We you know the the, the township's going to pay for our premiums. Uh, no matter who's on the end of that, we're going th th that the answer is going to be no. And so you're going to put it's a negotiation. So you know, unless at the end of the day, you, the public and the and the commissioners and everyone else knows every back and forth that occurred, um, this idea of well, what did you hold out for? Well, it, the township could have hold out, held out for not having to pay every employee two hundred thousand dollars a year and not having to you know to pay all their health care. So. It, it's a negotiation again. So the idea that well, you held out for something. Well, so did they, and it's negotiation. They, they, the union decided, well, we're going to strike. That's our leverage, and the township decided, well, we're going to just abide by the previous agreement, and we're going to abide by what the statutes allow us to do, and that is, if the health insurance expires, it's not a decision, unilateral decision from the township. It is a, uh, it, it's something they're allowed to do by law. So it's a negotiation, and. and you know, I, at the end of the day, we're here tonight voting on a resolution. We, we solved the problem. The problem has been solved. And we can all argue, well, the process wasn't right. The process was this. The pro well, guess what? Here we are. Everyone's going back to work. We have an agreement, and we're going to sign off on it tonight, hopefully. Okay. Um, we can all argue about the process. We can all argue about you know, all the things that were done wrong along the way, and we can dispute that. But the, at the end of the day, our public works folks are going back to work with a deal that they are happy with because they're signing off on it. So we got there. We did it. And that's it. So um, thank you, Commissioner Mabila. So Mr. Hodges, did you, are your questions answered? I'll take your silence as a yes. Um, it sounds like Tori kind of, uh, Renee kind of implied that they got everything they wanted. So my, I'm just wondering why it took so long. So I, I don't. I, I don't think anybody I, implied anything. But I mean, I, I think I think what we explained is it was a balance of discussions to come okay. to a come to an agreement. Uh, sure. And and the first question was uh, subcontract the cost of subcontractors during the strike. Um, I, we have not received our final uh, bills for that, so I, I can't answer that question. Okay, thank you very much. All right, you're very welcome. So, uh, Tracy, who do we have next? Brad Osborne is next. Hi, Brad, welcome. Oh, great, okay. I wasn't sure how that would work, unmuting. But thank you. I just have a simple question. I, Brad, I can we just get your address just just for the just for the record, please? Sure, it's in the chat, but it's fourteen sixty Coventry Road. But thank you, thank you. Yep. So I heard Commissioner Kelly make uh, what appeared to be a statement, but I didn't hear confirmation that that statement was true. So my question is this, and I'm sorry, um, 
Amy, your your name, at least on my screen, isn't showing, so I don't know your, your last name. So I don't mean to be so informal by calling you by your first name. Um, and I understand the statute that gives the township the authority to withhold health care benefits being part of the overall compensation topic. Um, so my question is, though, in the case of the health care benefits, although the statute gives the township the right to do what they did, are the, is the township obligated to have exercised that right, or was that a choice the township made? Give Amy a second to I unmute. I don't think the township made any choices on that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just interested in hearing from uh, the labor attorney. Thank you. My position is that under the statute, the township would be obligated to do that. It speaks of entitlements to employees' benefits, um, compensation, and benefits are compensation. Okay, so the township had no choice but to do what they did. To do what they did. I guess I don't. You can elaborate on do what they did. Uh, I don't think there was any affirmative action to say we're withholding your benefits i think it was related to labor folks here's what the net result of your strike is going to be so when you say brad do what they did i don't think the township took any affirmative action whatsoever yeah commissioner uh, mobilio you're right as it turns out you're right um because oh. the yeah strike did not go beyond sunday but the, the communication was made that the health care benefits would end if it extended beyond Sunday. So that's the basis of my question. If By statute. If, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Amy, I think what I heard you say was the township had no choice beyond February 28th other than to withhold health care coverage. Is that right? It was, again, it's not, Brad, it, your, your questions are so loaded and inappropriate. She, she's not saying, no one has said there was no choice but to withhold benefits. It's not a withholding of benefits. It's the statute says they're not entitled to benefits. Yeah. So it's not a withholding, it's, excuse me, it's not a withholding of anything. It is a expiration of benefits because of the, of the actions of the, of the union. There's no withholding. There's no option of, well, we're withholding. It is a it's an expiration. That, that's a good explanation. Thank you. Amy, would you agree with that? I, I do agree with the way that Commissioner Mobilio has um, presented okay. that information. Yes, it's, it is statutory. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, Tracy, who do we have next? Uh, there is no one else, Tori. All right. Very good. We will give an opportunity here for a minute or two just to make sure that if anybody's on the phone, um, they have the opportunity to unmute themselves um, if they have any questions or comments. Hey, Tori, it's Randy. Um, if you don't mind, I'd just like to thank two individuals specifically. Um, I do want to thank her, Bender, and Mike Elias uh, for their very hard work over these past few weeks uh, in the month of um, February. Uh, without those guys, um, you know, we, we, had a, we had a rough road there and, you know, we, we got through it and we got through it very well. So I wanted to personally thank those two gentlemen uh, for helping us through this process. Well, well said, Randy. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, you know, to, to round this up, I, I just want to emphasize again, um, you know, it's it's unfortunate. Um, I, you know, I heard a lot of comments that, you know, the, the 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 process was flawed, or they weren't informed, or they had no part in the vision and expectations. And, you know, I I respectfully disagree with that. I I think that the process was well well thought out, well run, and the information was very clear. We had very intense meetings on all of this, and I'm appreciative for all of that. And what I'm most appreciative for is that we're at this point this evening um, that everybody um, is back to work and we have a good agreement that that is agreed upon by both parties and ultimately benefits not just the um, the union our public works department but also the township as a whole 
So with that being said, um, we have no further comments or questions. So we would have the opportunity now for a motion um, to approve the tentative agreement with our local Teamsters 773. I so hear much. said motion. So moved. Oh, we have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second, please? A second. We have a second from Commissioner Walk. Can I have a roll call, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk. I have a quick closing comment. My first comment was the team did an, a very good job uh, and I appreciate it, uh, especially uh, our labor attorneys, uh, Renee, but our labor attorneys, Ryan Cassidy and Amy Snyder. We had a long discussion uh, with different opinions about the process. There, there was nothing said during that discussion about the process that should detract or diminish from the excellent work that you did uh, and uh, the end result we now have. So I just wanna make sure that you know that uh, personally, you know, for me, I vote aye. Commissioner Mobilio. I, I'm loath to even make a comment, but I will just very briefly say that I know that some, some commissioners have identified the quote unquote process as an issue, but in all of our calls and, and conversations with um, our folks, it has not been about process. It has been about wanting to have a say over the minutia of the process, not the, well, you know, I'd like to have more info. It's been about, well, tell me, is it percent versus flat fee? Is it this and that? It, it, there is, we have no business, the five of us. And again, I'm the only lawyer on this board and I'm not suggesting that I, that means anything. In fact, I'm conceding it means nothing when it comes to negotiating a labor agreement. Uh, but for any of us to argue, we should have a more involved process or be more involved in the process to be able to negotiate or, or add our two cents to negotiations uh, is incredibly self-absorbed of anyone to make that comment. Uh, so my, yes, I'm voting in favor of it because I, I am happy with the agreement and I'm, I'm more than thrilled to get our public works folks back to work and give them the benefits that they deserve. But if this is the, ben if this is the beginning of a future you know, expectation that they're the commissioners who, again, no qualifications to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations or day-to-day -day negotiations. If that's what this is going to be about, then I, I worry and I have sincere concern about the future of this township. Commissioner Sutton. Um, I vote yes. I would say that um, <clears throat> despite the difficulties that we had in the negotiation, I'm very proud and happy to see that the township and the union have come to the meeting of the minds. I think both parties are happy. I want to congratulate and thank our team, uh, the legal team, the management, for doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Commissioner Kelly. Yes, thank you. Um, just a brief comment. Um, I wanted just to state that my qualifications to have asked to be present for um, to just have a seat at the table for negotiations is certainly that it has been past practice in the township and has, has been done successfully. Um, my qualification is that I'm an elected official. I'm also the vice president of this board and I'm accountable for the matters of the township. And to state that um, any commission was asking about minutia. I just want to put for the record that, um, again, for the months of November, December, and most of January, we had no communication uh, to this board of how negotiations were going. Um, and it did spur me to ask for a meeting at the end of January um, because we had not been involved or updated and I didn't know where we were in the process. And it was very concerning for me as a legislator of the township to uh, have knowledge of what was going on with the process. So. Um, I do thank the team, um, the legal attorneys, uh, Renee, Randy, 
uh, thank you for your hard work. I know it was a lot of hours. Um, again, I'll, I'll mirror what Commissioner Wilt said. My concerns over process do not reflect on the work that you have done. My concerns are that the board is charged with giving direction, whether it's for budgets or union contracts, um, and that was not done in this case. Uh, with that being said, I'm very thankful that the Public Works uh, employees uh, are going are coming back to work, and I welcome uh, to see them again around the township. I appreciate the work they do, and I vote yes on this contract. Commissioner Morgan. I vote yes as well, with my final comment being this. I think um, we have no choice tonight but as a, as a group to uh, agree to disagree in regards to the process, but I'll come back to the fact that um, I, I firmly believe the process was follow, followed by the letter of the law. Um, we were very informed and had great information sharing throughout the entire process. Um, nothing, you know, it, I, I didn't feel at any given point that we were out of the loop. Um, and at the end of the day, um, I think, I don't even know who said it at this point, but, you know, the end result is, is a good contract for um, our public works union and also, also ultimately um, a contract that makes sense for the township as the whole. And for that, I am very grateful. Um, and I'm grateful that we've, we've gotten to this point and we have a unanimous vote on this and that we have our public works um, workers back to work and we very much do appreciate everything they do for us. And I'm, I'm grateful for the team that worked very hard and uh, on this agreement, um, everyone who worked on it. Um, it was a lot of work and energy and, and thank you for that, much appreciated. So um, it was a unanimous vote, motion carries and tentative agreement um, is approved. Very good, thank you everybody. All right, next this evening under correspondence and information items, I will give a quick report out um, on our boards and commissions. So we, um, just, just as a matter of reference, we still have our civil service. We have two alternate um, positions um, that are vacant um, and we're looking for applications for those if anybody's interested. We have our landscape shade and shade tree. Um, we have two vacant positions on that one, also looking for applications. And our planning um, commission, we have one vacant position. We have five applications in. We've already started um, some additional interviews. We'll be having them um, still this week or this weekend. I think it's pushing into the weekend at this point too. So we're hopeful to have some information to come back to the board with on that one very soon. And I will report out that the Green Advisory Committee did meet um, on February 22nd. Um, I did forward to the board just for their um, edification, uh, just some information on the, um, the single use plastic survey um, and also some information on the printing and distribution estimated costs. Um, so that should be coming out shortly. Um, also, I'll, I'll kind of defer to, to Randy or, or Mike Cookets if they want to talk about this a little bit, but the Residence Guide um, Recycling Flyer, the, the team is very excited to get this thing up and rolling and out to the public. I think that's going to be a great piece of information. They're actively working on what we call the GAC Facts, which is a really exciting um, opportunity to provide um, on the website. Um, some interesting facts and tidbits, um, environmental tidbits that we can send out to the community. And I'll also mention that we are in discussions with um, the local Rotary Club on a possible community garden, but that's in its very infancy stages and more to come on that one. Um, I'll just move right in quickly to our, our volunteer fire um, committee Good met morning. on uh, March 1st. Uh, we sure had a, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't say it quick enough earlier. Um, could you tell us who the candidates are for the Planning Commission who are being interviewed? I, I can, I can tell you that. Um, so we have uh, Mr. Lee Solt, who's already been interviewed, but um, I think he has some additional information. We have Mr. Hodges. Um, we have, um, oh, Tracy may have to help me on this one. We have Ben Long, 
Mark Luth. And we have a fifth one. Oh, Andy yeah. Flagg and Andy yeah. Flagg. So those are the, the five applications that we have so far. Two of them um, we're working right now on, on scheduling and fine tuning those interviews. Thank you. You got it, you got it. So um, back to volunteer fire. Um, we had a great presentation by our own um, finance director, Scott, um, who gave a financial review to the team. Um, we talked about the apparatus plan review, upcoming needs, which might um, include uh, over the next few years, consideration of, of new radios, um, more information to come on that one. Um, we also talked about uh, different miscellaneous things like fueling options, but I will defer to any specific details to, I'm not sure if, if uh, Chris Kitravich is on the call tonight as our fire commissioner. And if he's not here, I'm sure Glenn could probably talk on those topics as well, if there was anything more to add. But great meeting, um, lots accomplished and lot to do moving forward. So just wanted to mention a few items that were talked about at those volunteer meetings and um, great groups. So that's, that's it for me, unless anybody else has something they wanted to report out. Commissioner Sutton, you, you were also on the volunteer fire, so I'll, I'll defer to you if you had anything else you wanted to add. I don't, that's fine. Okay, okay. So uh, Commissioner Mobilio or, or Kelly or Walk, did you guys have anything um, that you wanted to add? Comments my my only question is to Commissioner Sutton, who is the person, your back right, who's in that photo? Who is that person? <laughs> oh, that's a that's a long no, it's not. So, uh, I mean, you're in public, Mobile. Don't, All don't, right, so don't, let's don't, let's move along. No, let's move do, along. No, we, we listen, can talk don't about do that. No, I thought maybe you're going to be like, oh, that's my grandfather. I don't want to. I'm not the personal story behind it. I you will get you will get you will get the answer. No question about it. Okay. All right. I would All draw right. The are there any, are there any questions or comments from from the public on um, correspondence and information items? I'm sorry, Commissioner Murray. Before you move on, um, sure. Back to the volunteer fire. I, I think I heard you say that Scott gave an overview on on the financial for the coming year. Is that is that separate from the budget that we've just gone through? Is that something new? He actually was giving more of um, a discussion on um, how financial information would be provided and gathered from the, the different fire teams, um, things of that matter. He didn't go through specific numbers. It was more of an overview on, on the process moving forward. And the apparatus report, is that um, was that a the presentation as well? No, it was not a presentation. It was just an open discussion, um, which which was a great open discussion. Um, as you know, we have an apparatus plan, and it's a very fluid document. Um, and it was brought up that you know certainly it may be time for us to take a closer look at that plan and decide if there needs to be any necessary modifications or um, changes to it moving forward. So it was just an open discussion. No specifics uh, or decisions were made. It was just, hey, we need to start looking at this apparatus plan because, you know, as the dynamics in the township change, you know, and the needs of the stations change, it may be something that may need to be altered. Understood. Thank you. And just a question on the, the GAC meeting. Um, I did attend that meeting and have been attending them for some time. I'm thankful for um, the different board members and the perspective they bring. Um, I did hear the conversation last time, uh, last meeting about the community garden. Um, mm -hmm. It seemed like there was some land identified for a potential site and there was some discussion on potentially hiring a part-time person to help. Um, I would, would just ask, would this be something that we as a board should maybe have a workshop on? So we're on board with what's being oh, tandem. Oh, oh abs absolutely, I Diane. And we are so far, that's so far so it's just right now a vision and discussion you know absolutely when we get to um a solid plan um that is is you know something that we can discuss and 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 plan out they're just talking about different areas as far as an employee and they're also talking about is that somebody that could potentially be a, a volunteer a paid volunteer through another agency there's all these different um scenarios so absolutely as that get some more legs and more discussion and more information is put down on paper, we would certainly have more um, input from the board or even a workshop if needed, for sure. Thank you. You got it. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments, Tracy, are we getting from the public? Uh, yes, uh, Joanne Markowitz uh, did have a comment with regard to um, the posting of the positions on the website going forward. And um, the answer to that is yes. Um, the website has been updated uh, with regard to all the vacancies and uh, that will be something that you see on a regular basis. And feel free to call the township uh, with any questions that you might have with regard to any positions. Thanks, Thanks. Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. All right. If we've got no other questions, Tracy, we'll move right along in the agenda. Uh, I just want to make sure that Joanne, Joanne, did you have anything else that you wanted to to ask about? I see you're on the chat twice here. Oh, she said no. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. We have nothing this evening under um, direction and discussion items. Um, however, um, I, I would, I, I'm going to throw this out there um, because I think it's very important because certainly it, it, it was an extended topic of discussion this evening, but I think it's very important uh, that we, we, solidify um, our public meeting uh, and virtual meeting uh, rules that we talked about in etiquette. Um, they, they, you know, we've talked about them for, for quite some time. We've been passing along some comments, but, you know, I, I would like to make, personally, I would like to make a motion that we accept those meeting rules so that we can follow them um, and, and solidify them with a motion. That, that would be my, my motion this evening is to accept the the virtual meeting rules that we've presented this evening and um, continue, we'll continue to post them and uh, read them as we have been in, in past meetings moving forward. I'll second it. Sorry, can you put those up on the screen so that we can just review them quick? I don't have them handy. I'm sorry guys, what was that request for? What uh, to post the, put up on the screen the meeting, the virtual meeting rules. Sure, let me, I may have to stop sharing my screen real quick so I can share a new one. Okay. One second. Randy, I got it if you want me to share. Yep, I got it right here. It was just taking me taking me a second here. There we go. Sorry about that. No problem. I think I think also just as a matter of um ease, there was also another page to that that showed like a screenshot of you know where the mic and chat and all those functions are as well. I know there's a looks like there's a page too. So Commissioner Morgan, for um, I know we have engineers and land developers and different um, officials who come to our meetings. Will their names be put on our screens or will they be anonymous as well? That the names won't be displayed. They'll be announced at, at the, the meeting just like everybody else. Same way it would be at a public meeting, um, Diane. They they don't wear a name tag when they walk into the room. They they come up to the podium and, and they say, hi, my name is whomever, and I'm here to present on this subject matter. It would be the same exact process that we would follow here. No different. Thank you. You so, got it. So I, I have a comment. Um, you, you heard my opinion about uh, closing the attendance list in the chat room before. Um, th this document right here, it, it's really good. Um, it does not state explicitly, the attendee list will not be visible and the chat will not be visible. Um, and for completeness, I, I think statements should those statements should be on here if that's what you intend to do. I don't agree that's what we should do, but I don't think this document should be silent. I think it should make those statements. 
I think it says participants' names will not be displayed during the meeting. Okay, all right. I overlooked that. So um, that would be that would that would be my motion. I think we heard a second, but I, I do believe we need to open it up um, for any questions or comments um, from the public. Tracy, do we have any questions or comments? Yes, uh, Jacob Roth. Hi, Jacob. Hi, uh, fourteen ninety nine White Oak Road, Jacob Roth. Um, you know, I, I understand the wanting to make it go as as close as possible to an in person meeting. Um, so I'm just wondering, how would a member of the public um, get information on individuals who attended the meeting? I know at, at public meetings, whether they be for the Planning Commission or the, the BOC, um, you know, there was a sign-in sheet, uh, whether you wanted to speak or not, and also a, a sign-in sheet just for attendance. Uh, and those would obviously be made uh, public uh, to members of the community upon request. So I'm wondering if we're trying to, you know, make sure that this meeting is as close to uh, a typical in-person BOC meeting. How, how do we how do we satisfy that? That's a good question, Jacob. Um, the the answer to that is this: um, there there is no requirement to sign in at a public meeting, and and the majority of people who did come to our public meetings didn't necessarily always sign in. So um, and as far as anybody who spoke at a meeting or who approached the board, um, their information is gonna be in the meeting minutes. So that will all continue to be available. So it will in fact reflect um, almost identical to how we would be doing things in a public meeting. Awesome, that's, that's great. And I, this is just a, a suggestion. Um, like you said, there's the option to sign in, it's not required. Uh, would, it be, would it be an option for, for the township to post a link to a, a Google form? Um, that way if, if people want to make it known that they attended the meeting, they could at least put their name down in that. Uh, that way there's there's some sort of record, but it's not uh, coercive, it's it's completely voluntary. Uh, that's that's an interesting thought. I, I think if, if that were the case, I think if somebody wanted to make sure that um, their, their presence was known at a meeting, you, you would simply put that information in the chat and you would, that would be on the record, you know, please, please note that I was at the meeting, but I, I'm not. We'd have to check into the Google, Google Forms piece of that. I'm not sure how that would work. But again, okay. anybody who who comes to the meeting and approaches the board, their information is is going to be available through the meeting minutes. Awesome. Thank you. Just just you, a suggestion, but thank you. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, Tracy, from the public? Yes. Robert Hodges is next. Mr. Hodges. Hello, it's me again. Same address. Um, I guess my question is going to be kind of moot because I, I thought signing in at meetings, whether you spoke or not, was a requirement. But if it's not, then there's no point to my question. Um, my other, I was, but a second question is for these meetings where we are blocking people, we we can mute individual people. Are we not able to block the names of an individual who puts up an obnoxious name but leave other names up. Is that not possible? I, I'm not sure if it's possible or not, but I, I just want to emphasize we're not we're not blocking anybody. Nobody is being blocked. Everybody has the opportunity to speak and give their name and address if they want to approach the board, just like it would be at a public meeting. And um, if they want to unmute their mic, um, I give that opportunity also as well throughout the meeting um, at the end of any comment period if they're if they're signing in by phone and they would have the opportunity to do that. So yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I was not implying anything about the speaking. And if I use the word block inappropriately, what I meant was we cannot see anybody's names at this point. Is it not possible to uh, hi, hide any obnoxious names but allow you know normal names to appear? That can probably become pretty administratively tasking for whoever's facilitating the meeting, quite honestly. And, and again, I, the goal here, um, Mr. Hodges, is to truly keep this meeting as close to a public meeting forum as, as we possibly can. And when you come into a public meeting, you don't necessarily have to announce yourself or say your name. The only time you have to announce yourself or say your name is if you approach the board. And doing it this way, certainly reflects that same process. 
Thank you very much. You got it. You got it. Tracy, Man any other questions? Yes, Manly often has a comment. Sure, Manly. There you go. Uh, I'm just uh, pointing out that uh, everybody else, at least the ones I've looked at, say attendee number so and so. Mine has my name on it. Why? I think you will see your own name, Manly. Oh, I, I see. Okay. Yeah, I don't see your name, Manly. Okay, I was just curious. Uh, yep. That's so you don't forget what block you're in, I guess. Well, I guess, uh, you know, I'm getting <laughs> older and uh, that tells me who I am in case I forget. Yes. Okay. In case you forget. I, I remember when before COVID, like a month before, we were at the at in the public meeting and Manly coughed and I joked, Oh Manly, you don't you're not you don't have COVID, do you? And it was a big <laughs> joke and it was like, Oh God, now here we are a year later. So my apologies if I if I jinxed you at all or jinxed this whole board. <laughs> so um, do we have any other questions out there, Tracy? Uh there are no others. All right. So thank you, everybody. So we do have a motion on the floor um, and a second from Commissioner Sutton. So could I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk. Nay. Commissioner Mobilio. I'm sorry, is this a, it, the vote is to, to do what? To, the vote is to adopt the virtual meeting rules and etiquette that we've posted this evening and talked about at length. I mean, I, I'm I vote yay, but I think this is a good base. I'm not saying this is perfect, and I think we can tweak this as needed. Sure. But I think it's I think it's a it's a good thing to have in place minimum. But I'm not I'm not suggesting that this is the best possible scenario. So I'm going to say yes, just so that we have something in place to work off. Commissioner Satton. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Uh, I'm going to echo what I said earlier in the meeting. I, I don't feel like um, making everyone's name anonymous because of one bad person um, doing something at our last meeting. We've been successful for a full year, as well as I've been observing most of our boards, um, certainly on planning commission. Um, it's working well. So, no, I, I don't I don't think this is the best plan. I, I think we should We'll look at that again. So I'm going to vote no right now. Commissioner Morgan. Discussion. Oh, yes. And again, I emphasize that I the goal behind this is to make sure to keep it as close to a public meeting as, as possible. So I, motion I carries. One, Thank you, everybody. Can I make just one, one, one little comment? I'm hoping that uh, this this virtual meetings are going to end very soon. Oh, so me this, too. This, yeah, so this this may not be applicable three months from now we hope that would be lovely if we could get in person hopefully this sooner so we're hopeful for that certainly joe all right um i guess we'll move um into old business commissioner oh yes commissioner I'm kelly so sorry. Um, i did have something to add um a couple months ago we voted on the pavilion rentals um and ball fields and i know we approved a new fee schedule and i remember when we did that that um we said that we would waive youth groups in parkland area school district fees for the fields um, i've gotten a few calls from some residents regarding um I guess little leagues getting cranked up and um, they're being told that if they use a field at one of the school facilities, um, now these leagues are now having to pay for porta potties themselves, which in the past they had not had to do. So um, I did reach out and speak um, to Mike Kukis, who was very helpful to review this with me, but it seemed like that was how things are standing. And as I reviewed this uh, rental form again, I saw that we are waiving it for the school district as well as our approved youth groups and i'm just wondering as a township if we can work with the school district to have that be reciprocal if we're going to um, waive the fees for the school district to use our fields um, to find a way to work with them so that our 
South Whitehall residents who are part of these little leagues aren't having to then pay to use those facilities. So I don't know if there's anyone else has had any feedback on that, but I um, wanted to throw that out there and see if that's something we as a township could potentially approach the school district to work out a benefit reciprocal for both of us. So, Commissioner Kelly, I, I got a similar call as well. And and, and I took, um, I, I, I also, um, Mike, Mike provided some clarity on that. Um, understanding that you know this that same rule applies to all the other youth organizations as well moving forward um so the thought was one of the thoughts that i had that i threw out there to them was i'm 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 looking into a few possible grant opportunities that might be available for some of the youth organizations that might also be an avenue for them to be able to offset some of those costs that that need to be paid. Um, so I think there might be a variety of different things that we, we might be able to help them with, uh, you know, discussions with the school district. That's a, that's a great idea. But also, like I said, I think, I think we could, might be able to look at some possible um, grant opportunities too. So maybe we could try and have a discussion, um, a further discussion with, with Mike and, and, and Randy to see what kind of opportunities are out there. I know Mike and, and Randy had also mentioned they were gonna try and work out a deal um, for to get some of that for some of that at cost um, and going in with the township to, to reduce those costs for um, for them for the organizations. So uh, I think we have some opportunities um, to, to hopefully help them. Um, but I do know that they're also I'm sure you you had also talked to, to Mike and Randy there were some you know limitations on on costs from the township end that they needed to address. So. I think we have to kind of think outside the box on this one and see what we can do to try and help them as well. Well, again, just on the, from a reciprocal standpoint, um, if we are waiving the school district from using our township fields, it, it would make sense to me that that would work the other way as well, that, that they're not incurring fees. And is there a way to have our uh, residents who are participating in sports not having fees for their fields. So I guess I'm asking that question again, just to get some clarity. I, I remember when we voted on this, that uh, we did have discussion that the fees would be waived, which is how things have been in the past to you know, encourage and help our youth with their sports. So you know, as a township, can we approach the school system? I don't know how or who we would call there. Um, maybe Randy might be able to do in that department commissioner kelly can you um can you run through that one more time i'm, I'm a little confused are, are you I, the the fee schedule was strictly for um field rentals they weren't specific to the porta potties which i believe the youth group you're referring to is is challenging um and just for for everybody's edification that was communicated with all youth groups um at our 2020 field meeting um, where, when they were advised that 2020 would be the last year the township would be uh, footing the bill for the um, porta potties at school district facilities, we do still provide those porta potties at township owned facilities. Um, but we were looking for uh, ways to, um, you know, reduce costs on on the township residents for for those sorts of things. So they don't pay this. I don't. I don't believe they. They um, pay for school district fields either because they're a youth group in the township. Um, so it's it's strictly a, a porta potty issue here. I think is is what we're discussing. Correct, but I I guess the challenge is that our township fields get filled up quickly. So is that a first come first serve? I mean, no. In fact, they in, in fact the youth groups actually you know get first dibs. You know, they they have tenure at a lot of our baseball fields, soccer fields, whatever uh, field we're we're kind of talking about. But um, you know, the the way our our, our policy works is, um, you know, if, if an outside group were to come in, you know, we would work with the youth groups to see if there's any availability, kind of work around their schedules as well. Uh, but our youth groups have a first tenure on our fields here in the township. Okay, very good. Thank you. Right. So, Tori? Yes. 
there is there is one more uh, comment in the chat box. Um, Cindy Smith has a question. Sure, Cindy. Hi. Um, this is regarding the um, chat box. First of all, there's many options to who we send the um, comment to. That was my first question. And secondly, I think we should know who um, is on the call and who's making the comments. Because I can't, all the comments that have been made so far, I cannot see them in the chat. And there's different options on who you send it to. Some clarification would be appreciated. Thank you. Sure. Would you, um, Tracy or Renee, would you like to explain that, the, how that function works? Well, I know as I, as I see them in the, the chat box, that's when I, I let uh, Commissioner Morgan know that someone would like to speak or they have a question. So um, that's how I'm operating on, on my end. Um, Renee, do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, I guess I would say that if there's a question in the chat box, Tracy is calling that out to the public. Um, to the public and for calling on the individual to identify themselves to make a comment. Okay, thanks. You got it, you got it. All right, Tracy, anything else? Uh, no more comments or questions at this time. Great, we're gonna move right into our old business. Um, we have our Where's Dam status report. Renee, would you like to report out on that one? Um, we did hold a, a public workshop last week um, on the Where's Dam status. Um, so the next steps are some of the permitting for the Ells, um, Lehigh County Conservation District. So we are underway on those permits. Um, but again, we spent, I don't know how long that workshop was last week, but we spent um, a length of time going over the timeline and how we got to where we are today. So again, that works continued, which was the next step on that process was the other additional permitting. Um, I can roll right into the campus renovation project. Um, you know, next meeting is when we typically give a more in-depth um, explanation, but I will say that the township is in the final um, steps, so we're almost across the finish line here. Um, we will be looking in the next um, two weeks to start to transition back to Walbert Avenue, um, providing everything goes well here over the next few days. So um, we will keep you posted. We will post it online when we have a definitive date, um, but we are starting to, to um, get that transition back. Um, but I will say that when we do move back, I know we're all hoping to go back to public meetings. Um, that the public meeting room will be the last room that's completed. Um, it's just about, it looks fabulous, but um, so when we do move back, we will not have the use of the public meeting room immediately. That will that will lag behind a few weeks, but um, we're looking forward to being able to return to the building. Renee, why is that? Um, I know you mentioned that last meeting and I didn't get a chance to ask you, why is there some work still to be done in that public meeting room? Yeah, yeah, and that was planned that way. Um, what, that was that way. What remains to be done in that room? Um, like countertops at the dais, um, stuff like that. There is some computer technology that needs to go in there as well that is continuing to be worked on. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to go right into um, the last item, Renee, the credit cards? I'm going to hand that over to Dave Manhart. Hi, so um, credit card update. We are currently evaluating different payment scenarios. So, you know, different ways that people will pay based on you know, whether it's in collections and different things that could possibly come up and 
cause some snags. So we're trying to make that process as smooth as possible. Um, we had hoped to have a demo tonight, um, but who knew that it would be so difficult to set up a fake account um, because it's entwined with so many other pieces of the utility billing program. Um, for example, we have to end up setting up meter, fake meter numbers and things like that. Um, so we don't have the demo yet, but once we get that kind of dummy account set up, then we can provide that demo. So that, that's where credit cards are. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Are there any, any questions or comments from the board on any of the old business items? I'd just like to make one comment. Um, thank you for pulling together the workshop for the dam. Um, I thought Michael Baker International did uh, an excellent job present, presenting um, a very fact-based and, and appropriate presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask what, or maybe ask, do we have an asset maintenance schedule? And the reason I'm asking that is during the meeting, there was some discussion about the slide plate in the middle of the dam that needs to be open twice a year for maintenance. And the report had stated that it didn't seem that that had been done and the, was rusted. It just made me think about um, the assets the township has, whether it's parks, or the dam or you know now we've got the new building coming up and do we have a schedule of maintenance that we have for all of our township assets uh, yes Diane. yeah th there is a schedule of maintenance um the dam in particular the dam is inspected um the dam is inspected unfortunately the gate has not worked for I, my understanding it predates my um years and years and so this this was the plan to fix that gate so but the township has preventative maintenance programs and um for their township assets and the new building does come with warranties so is that um something that's in some sort of a document that can be shared with the board i'd be curious to see that the preventive maintenance plan. I mean, there's different documents for different dam inspections and that kind of stuff. So, no, um, I just overall for the different assets. You know, we own the that house by the covered bridge. Um, like I said, the dam, our parks. You know, the life expectancy of a park and what our maintenance is on them. We may not have that now. I'm just asking a question out loud. I remembered when I was a you know, before I was elected, I was attending the meeting about um, the building renovation and it was talk about you know the plumbing and electric had you know pretty much come to the end of their useful lives um just it, it would just be good i think to have a chart of the assets that the township owns and what our life expectancies are for them and what what we're going to do to be good stewards of maintaining them well, yeah, we do have asset listings. Um, we have an asset program. Um, and so again, you know, there's preventive maintenance done um, and public works, Herb Bender may have different schedules for that stuff, but yes, there's preventive maintenance done just like we go out and do preventive maintenance on generators and that type of thing on a regular basis. Okay, but there's not one central document that has our assets listed. There is this document that has our assets yet listed, yes. Okay, I'd like to get a copy of that. I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from the board? All right, any, Tracy, do we have any questions from the public? Uh, there are none, Tori. Great, okay. Mm -hmm. That being said, we will move right into courtesy of the floor. This is the opportunity for anybody in the audience to approach the board on any non-agenda item. Do we have anything in the chat, Tracy, for courtesy of the floor? There are none at the moment. Um, let's see. Oh, one just popped up. Uh, Robert Hodges. Mr. Hello. Hodges. Seems like I'm taking over the meeting. Sorry about that. No um, it's been mentioned just recently a few times that we're hoping to go back to uh, in-person meetings again, and I th think we all are all looking forward to that. But my suggestion, and I hope there's some consideration given, is that even when we're back in 
in-person meetings that the virtual aspects continue. Um, one, not everybody might be ready to go back to in-person meetings, even though you know, we start them, some people might still be afraid to be in groups. Um, and two, some people may not you know, be able to make it out to meetings. They, they may be you know, bedridden, homeridden, not able to get out. And yet by doing it virtually like this, in addition to in-person, a lot more people would be able to attend the meetings and contribute. So I hope that that's being considered and will be put into uh, effect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hodges. Good points. We'll definitely have to take that under advisement, see what, what the opportunities are. Commissioner right. Morgan, um, yes. he just made me think of that when we talked about the new website and Granicus, the new meeting platform. Um, I, I recall, and I hope I didn't recall wrong, um, that there was capability to live stream our meetings on our new website. I believe so. I believe you're correct. That's so, correct. Okay. But when we have to be back in the new meeting room for that to happen. Correct. Okay. So that we do have that ability with our new site. Yep. Correct. Okay. Very yep. good. Thank you. All right. Tracy, anything else? There are no other names in the chat box. Okay. I'll give it a minute or two in case there's anybody joining us by phone um, that wants to unmute their mic and talk. All right, hearing nothing. Oops, did I hear something? No. All right, our invoices and purchasing requisitions have been reviewed by our township manager and our director of finance. We do need a motion this evening to authorize that our checks be issued to pay our bills as tabulated. Do I hear said motion, please? I moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a second. Second from Commissioner Morgan. And can I have a, a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk. Aye. Commissioner Mobilio. I th think we may have lost Commissioner Mobilio. Commissioner, mm. I'll go to Commissioner Satin. Okay. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Morgan. Uh, aye. Motion carries. All right. Just make a, a note that uh, Commissioner Mobilio was, was um, he must have dropped from that call, so he won't have a vote on that one. But motion carries. All right. We have no executive session planned for this evening, but I do need a motion for adjournment, please. So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. I'll second it. Second from Ty there by Commissioner Walk and Commissioner Setton. We'll give it to Commissioner Walk. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Please stay safe.